Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. It's time to finish up the work with the power infrastructure that we started with that tunnel over from the Deep Resonance uh, water platform over to the main base. So the tunnel's done, but now we need to actually distribute the power through the tunnel and to the rest of the base. So, like I mentioned at the end of the last episode, I wanted to do a little bit of R&D before I decided exactly how I wanted to distribute power. Like with what items and with what mods. And... Well, I've done a bit more research on the laser relays from Actually Additions, which is what I was going to test. I'm still going to test them, but I did discover a few things. For one, I can't really use them. Um, the main problem is that the recipes are actually extremely expensive. So if you look here, um, it actually turns out that there's three different tiers of energy relays. I thought there was only two. So there's the basic one, which transfers a thousand. And I actually found a section in the Actual Editions manual that mentions how much each one transfers. I wasn't able to find it before, but the basic one is 1,000. The advanced is 10,000 RF per tick. And the extreme is 100,000 RF per tick. So if I could mass produce these extreme energy laser relays, just based on the RF per tick, they'd be perfectly adequate to distribute the power that I want. Um, however, the recipe for the extreme ones are very expensive. Uh, the tungsteel steel is not too bad to get. However, I would need to mass produce ender resonators, which um, all of this is pretty easy except the enderman head. I basically would need more like mob killing infrastructure to be able to actually mass produce enderman heads. That's a whole nother thing to get into. And also, that's not even talking about the teleportation core. I need a single teleportation core just to make four of these, and that takes all sorts of stuff. It takes haste alloy, atomic alloys, it takes diamonds, and probably most seriously it takes emeralds, which I don't have very much of. And then this itself comes from refined obsidian dust and reinforced alloy, and refined obsidian dust comes from obsidian and more diamond, and even more diamond, and yeah, just I would need like a lot of infrastructure and stuff to support mass producing these extreme ones. And the advanced ones are not powerful enough for what I want at 10,000 RF per tick. And even they are actually quite expensive. They take Lapatron crystals and empowered Restonia crystals. And I found out that the Lapatron crystal actually has to be filled up with EU. So when you craft these, by default, they're completely empty. But for some reason, you know, I just put the all the stuff in the recipe thing and I wasn't able to actually craft it. And I thought, no way, do you actually have to fill it up? Because if you look at it here, it says 0 out of 10 million EU, so in the recipe it shows it as not filled. But it wouldn't craft, so I filled it up, and then it would craft. So for whatever reason, they actually have to be filled up, and these are so annoying to make. Oh, Because all these things with NBT data, I can't auto-complete the recipe to make it in this uh, Ender.io inventory panel. So i got to kind of manually do it. So basically, it sucks, I don't have the infrastructure to make all this stuff, and etc, etc. So they're definitely not going to work, but I do want to test their energy loss. So according to the book, the basic energy laser relay has an energy loss of 5%. And it says that the energy loss actually gets greater with the higher tiers. So I'm curious about two things. One, how much greater does it get? The base is 5%. What's the next one? 10% or something? And the other thing I'm curious about is, is that loss per connection as in if it has to go through like three different lasers to get to the destination is it going to lose whatever that's loss percentages per laser or does it only lose that percentage once from the source to the destination so let's test it i've got some advanced energy laser relays should be 10,000 rf per tick i have two vibrant capacitor banks one of which is filled up with a full 25 million rf the other is completely empty um, I believe I'm going to need the laser wrench as well to configure them. So, let's try it. I just want to just see how they look. Okay, cool. So, hold a compass to modify. Oh, right, I think that's to modify the direction. Yeah, the directionality of the energy flow. Right now it's set on both directions. So I guess you can set it to like output only. But uh, yeah, I think I right click and then right click on this and yeah, okay, that's working. Um, so now I probably need to configure the fiber capacitor bank itself. 
right? I probably have to say output. Yeah, there we go. And as you can see IO right now, it's um, taking in 10,000 RF per tick. So yep, exactly as the book says. It hasn't been changed in the config files for this mod pack. Cool. It is kind of a neat look, isn't it? I'm just imagining, what would my whole base look like if every single power connection I had was a laser beam? So instead of wires like this, there's just laser beams all over the place. I wonder if it would look cool or just overwhelming with so many connections. I don't know. One of the nice things about the lasers is apparently they don't actually um, have any issues with colliding into blocks. So if there's a block in between these lasers here, it won't actually stop the laser from from connecting. It might kind of look funny, but it, yeah, it should solve all my kind of uh, connection issues with, oh, that thing can't reach there because the thing's in the way. So that'd be kind of nice. But uh, anyway, let me watch this finish filling up and when it's done I'll bring you back so we can see how much energy was lost. That's interesting. So there's apparently no loss whatsoever of power. I transferred from here to this one. There's no loss. So then I put more, more more nodes, more relays in between. Still no loss. The book says there is a loss. 5% for the basic one and increasing for the the higher tiers. So I guess maybe it's been disabled in the config files or something? By the mod pack developers? Dunno. Well, that's nice nonetheless. Still though, yeah, I'm not going to be able to use those anytime soon with my current crafting capabilities. So, let's go over what I'm actually going to do to transfer power. Alright, so I'm going to use Xnet for the bulk power transfer from the Deep Resonance place to the mainland. But I'm not going to use Xnet for everything. And the reason is, well, there's two reasons. Uh, one is that I don't like the fact that the control over power for Xnet is centralized to just the controller. So if I want to manage the power and I want to add something new to the system, I would have to not only connect it, but then go to the controller, a single point somewhere on the map that I have to go to every time I want to add anything to the network to receive power. I think it's a little bit annoying. I'd rather just be able to connect it and then it just gets power. And the other reason is that it just doesn't look as cool. I mean, I really like the, the look of these power poles from Immersive Engineering. I think they're really neat. They feel like a real actual power infrastructure. I like seeing the wires connecting everything. I like them. The only problem with them is that they don't transfer enough power for what I'm doing. However, I did learn by looking at the config files that they actually transfer a bit more than I think. So I thought they transferred 4000 RF per tick, um, but it actually turns out it's, I guess, probably been modified in the configs for this mod pack. They actually are capable of transferring 8000 RF per tick. So double what I thought, still not enough to be the bulk transfer from the island to the mainland. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'll use Xnet for the bulk transfer because Xnet can do 100,000 RF per tick if you use advanced connectors. I'm going to use that for bulk transfer. And then I think I'm going to have that connect to basically substations. So I'll have Xnet connect to probably like a small capacitor bank maybe in the center of the base and then like over here kind of split the power up into a couple of different areas and then from that capacitor I'll have the HV wire connectors connect to this system that I already have set up so I shouldn't need to redo the power for anything that I already have connected it's just that instead of it all being one big power network it's going to be like everything over here connects to one battery bank and you know everything here connects to a different one so the power is a little bit more distributed and I've got more more headroom to play with when it comes to transmission rates and stuff like that. So I think that's the plan. I'm also thinking, just for the look of it, I might want to actually put immersive engineering connectors inside of this tunnel. Not actually connected to anything, but just for the looks of it, I think it would look cool to have like tons of wires going through this tunnel rather than just a single XNet connector, which really, I don't know, it just wouldn't look very cool, would it? A single connector? Nah. Let's make it cooler. So I want to mess around with something that I haven't used yet. 
There's these wooden wall mounts in immersive engineering. So you can use them for things like, well, it's going to blend in with the tree a bit here. But instead of using a pole, you could actually just like connect the wall mount to something and then put some sort of a connector on it. Looks pretty cool. I want to see if I can maybe make it so that I can connect multiple things, uh, multiple connectors to one wooden post in a way that actually looks good. Uh, yeah, those aren't going to work. I'm trying to think, how would I run multiple connectors in like a compact way? Obviously I could use a different post for each individual thing, but I don't think I'd want to do that. And I think if you put these on the side, they just float, right? Yeah. Hmm. So maybe you are kind of limited to one. Well, anyway, I'll worry about the decorative aspects after I get the Xnet connection going. Whoa, that fell faster than I thought. Is it? Oh, it's because of the Cordata ring, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Just fell through there like a lead brick. Anyway, so I think for the power line, I want to make it red instead of the default blue. Just so it's like really easy to visually distinguish between the, con the connection types. So for that, I need a lot of red. It takes a single piece of red dye to turn a single piece of network cable red. Huh, I think this dirt escaped the collection field of the hopper hawk. That's fine. It's only a little bit of it. Anyway, yeah, this wonderful system should help me out with getting tons of red dye. 3,000 mystical flowers. Red mystical flowers. Yeah, I think that should be enough. Alright, let's run that red power line. So thankfully it won't connect to this other color that we have here, which is good because we want this to be a totally separate network. It is going to be a little bit tricky to make it look good, though. Gonna have to break a, a bunch of these mossy stone bricks. Probably run it through these bricks. Over here, and then probably around the back or something. Yeah, I'll probably run them back here. So I've got this red line running to the back now. Let's hook it up. And... Well, I guess I don't need that there anymore, do I? It's actually going to look better with it there, though, once I put the facades on. So these are normal connectors right now. Let's go ahead and upgrade those to advanced ones. There we go. So now each individual one can transfer 100,000 RF per tick. So we could actually transfer 200,000 RF per tick just because there's two connections. Which is actually the max output of this thing, isn't it? Yeah. So I can transfer the max output possible with this vibrant capacitor bank at the moment could always add more and even up the transfer rate even more so let's facade all this haha uh -huh, check this out I can use the formation wand to place down tons of this cable sweet we got to the end of the tunnel here and I'm getting the weirdest behavior at first I couldn't break any of the sand or anything that was here, and then I was able to break it, but now it's just acting weird, like the sand is infinitely falling and then resetting. I can't place glass here, and yet it still takes it out of the glass in my hotbar, like you can see the number in my hotbar going down, but then if you like double click it, it goes back up to what it should be. Something is deeply wrong. <laughs> um, I'm gonna relog. Okay, I've got the whole line run all the way to the end of the tunnel here. Also dug a quick little exit out this way, so I can just get to the base quickly without having to go all the way back out there. And uh, yeah, relogging fixed the issues I was having here. So I was gonna dig straight down from here and then go down to surface tunnels, but I realized I don't think I actually want to do that. I think I want to just dig forwards a bit until I reach the spot where I want to pop up, and then I want to pop up to, I guess sort of just like the power management station. I want like a little power management station where the Xnet controller is going to be. Where should it be? Actually, I am going to want service tunnels, aren't I? Because I need to run power to the other capacitors that are going to be around the base. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I guess I will have service tunnels, but I do want the actual Xnet manager controller thing to be above ground. I think I want to put it right here. It's a nice little spot. 
So, we need to be X, that, and Z, that. <laughs> Those tiny little numbers in the top right. Uh, yeah, let me dig the hole all the way to here and dig up. Got a nice big hole here now. I think I want to build a structure to house it. Hmm, this type of factory block looks pretty good. Caution framed plates. I'm trying to, I have to keep reminding myself that I want to go for designs of buildings and structures in Minecraft that actually fit with your playstyle. It's so easy to fall back into, what is this, you know, what would this sort of thing look like and need to be if it was being used by humans in the real world? You would have walls covering the whole thing, you would have like a staircase going up and down anything, you would have a doorway, but in Minecraft, especially modded Minecraft, when you're running around super fast all the time and you just want to get from point A to point B and you have a jetpack. You don't want to be opening doors. You don't necessarily want things to have closed walls everywhere. So I got to keep reminding myself to go for designs like this. Where it's like open on all the sides so it's kind of easy just to sort of jetpack into it and just walk in. You don't have to like go to the exact right side and fiddle with a door or anything like that. I like it. Simple, elegant, and usable. And then the controller is going to go right in the center here. And that's how you're going to control all the power. So it's going to be here. Oops. So it's going to be like that. There'll be a connection down below. I was thinking of putting an actual access point to the surface tunnels right here, but I think it would kind of ruin the look of it a little bit. So I think I'll put an access point somewhere else. So again, going with the idea of simplicity and usability, Oh, let me turn off my uh, light display. Put a light up here. Nice. So simplicity and usability, I think for access tunnels, instead of doing anything fancy, I think I'm just going to dig a 3x3 three three hole straight down in just occasional intervals, just wherever I think they might be useful to have an access point. Just goes straight down, accessing the service tunnel. No ladders or anything like that. Um, the only thing I want to do is, I think I'm going to put a rim of this, like, caution stripes around it, just to make sure I don't just walk around and accidentally fall in a hole. I'm trying to think of how I want to put it, though. I don't think I want it like this, do I? Do I want just a single block that you can fall into? I mean, that's probably fine, right? It's a little bit annoying to come up through it, though, because you got to, like, be really precise. You'll probably bop your head against it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I've got that over there. Um, I also connected it from the end of the tunnel over there all the way up here, so... There... Wait. Wait, what? Something's wrong. This isn't showing... This isn't showing the connection on the other side. The power. Is it severed somewhere? Did, did I miss, like, a single block somewhere? That's all connected. Uh, let me go see where I went wrong. I've narrowed it down to right here. This is the, the threshold. Or it'll work or not work. So there's the... Deep Resonance place over there. So you can see we're actually very, very close to it. Definitely not a unloaded chunk kind of thing. So when it's connected here, it doesn't show up. If I connect it here, just one closer, it shows up. To make it even odder, if I connect it here where it doesn't show up, but I put like a connection here, now it shows up. I don't understand. Oh, wait. Oh, I know what it is. I don't know exactly, like, I don't know exactly why the problem exists, but it's the formation wand. This, the point where it works and when it stops working is when I started using the formation wand. Hmm. I don't think these cables connect 
like they, they visually connect but I don't think they connected to the network properly and formed like a whole unit when placed with a formation wand if you look here it says for this red network cable it says network 55 right and then here it doesn't say any network network 55 nothing but this is network 55 so it's any time it's traveling through a block that's been placed by the formation wand Oh no, I have to replace all of it. Well, that blows. Ah, there we go. Probably like 10 minutes later. Look at this. Vibrant capacitor banks. Thank God. Yes, highlight them across the map. Look at that cheeky little creeper. Gotcha. Okay, so I think what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do now is probably make the substations. Yeah, let's do that. So let's say I'm on one right here, which I do. Because this is gonna be a pretty good place to supply power to this area here, and I especially want to make sure that the arc furnace has, like, maybe not an exclusive line, but a very lightly used line because it requires so much power. So let's make a service tunnel right here. So I think what I'm going to do is just pick all the spots where I want these things to be. I'm going to dig down to Y60, because that's about the level of my service tunnels. There we go. Yeah, and then now that we're... Like, the tunnel going up itself will be a 3x3, three three, but then the actual service tunnel itself is a 5x5, five five, so I'll put that back in. And... I guess we'll just drill towards the other tunnels. Yeah, actually, let's try using Journey Map. It might be able to help us kind of link these tunnels up. By the way, the reason this stuff's following me is because I've got a greater ring of magnetization from Batania on. So don't be too disturbed by it. So yeah, let's try to use Journey Map. I mean, of course, we could actually see the stuff, but I think we could maybe do better. Let's try to add a new point so it'll default to my current location. I'll leave it on. So now, there's a point right there. We might be able to use that to link up the tunnels, because we could just aim for that point. I think we, yeah. So we'll see through it like that. Yeah, and it tells you the coordinates, so I could see when I'm like lined up with it. So it's at 71, 671, which is this right here. So if we extend this a little bit, and go right here, we should link right up with it. Is it above us? Oh no. Yeah, perfect. Look at that. Okay, yeah, I think I'll use that tactic for all the further substations that I make. I'll just dig down, dig a 3x3 down, where I want there to be a vibrant capacitor bank and, you know, a power distribution center, and then put a waypoint, and then go back to the main service tunnel and join it up. Okay, so let's try to map out what these little substations are going to look like. So obviously we have a connection going up to it. And I carved out an extra slot for the network cable. But what kind of a structure do I want around it? Do I want to do the same thing as over there, perhaps? Yeah, so perhaps like that, similar structure. Well, basically the exact same structure, except instead of the floor being made out of this factory block, it's made out of this other type of factory block, because it's also an access tunnel. So something like that, and then probably just... I'm trying to think of how the capacitors are going to work. Oh, we're going to want this to be an advanced connector. Yeah, everything should be an advanced connector. So we put a connector here, make it advanced put a capacitor bank there. So something like this, and I'll probably facade that block there to look like this factory block. So it looks a little a bit less weird and more like the capacitor bank is actually being supported by something. So a single capacitor bank should be fine, because it can transfer 25,000 RF per tick. 
which is that's enough for um three it's enough for three hv power connectors like three separate hv power connectors to connect to it and then it'll have a little extra throughput left over so one vibrant capacitor bank should be fine it is going to have to connect to hv connectors though so i'm just thinking like is there enough room for it to connect to hv connectors it could just go maybe like straight up to the roof perhaps Maybe up the center? I'm thinking something like this. Like an HV wire connector up top, goes up here to a wooden post, and then this just hooks into the normal network. I think that seems good. Alright, so let's actually give this a test. Let's make sure this works. Like, I want to make sure that these capacitor banks can output directly to immersive engineering wire connectors. It probably can. Uh, well, first thing, let's actually transfer power to it, huh? So which one is which? Well, these two have very similar coordinates, so they must be the immersive, or not the immersive, the uh, deep resonance ones. So, make an energy channel. We will extract. Does that say 10,000 per tick? That's 10,000. That should be 100,000. That's odd. It should be an advanced connector. What about this one? Hmm? I'm confused. Yeah, so this vibrant capacitor bank, which if you highlight it, it's the one that's just right here. That one does have an advanced connector. And if you look at the extract rate, it says max energy extraction. 100,000 per tick. These others say 10,000 per tick, but I'm like 99% certain that they're advanced connectors as well. Yeah, look at this. These are both advanced red connectors. Says it right in the tooltip. Maybe if I just replace them? No, still max energy extraction rate 10,000 per tick. What? That doesn't make any sense. Why? They're all advanced connectors. I don't get it. Let me just try setting it to... Well, let me just try not setting it. It should default to the max, right? So let's just say we're going to extract from one of the deep resonance ones. And then we're just going to insert. And let's see how fast it's inserting. Oh yeah, yeah look at that, it's getting 25,000 RF per tick. So it's somehow, it's just the display that's messed up, it is actually transmitting, I'm assuming, the full 100,000 RF per tick, because it's definitely not transmitting, or it's not limited to 10,000 RF per tick. Okay, alright well, works fine, just display's weird. That really bothers me though, why? I'm just gonna replace it. Yeah, still says 10,000. Yeah, well, whatever. So it works perfectly fine. So our substation is now completely filled up with power. Oh, this HV wire connector actually says that it has power inside of it, so I guess that works. Now let's show a real use case for, like, why I want this system. Here, specifically, for this arc furnace. So this thing uses a lot of power. One of the hardest things to make, pretty much anything will kill it with, with power, but one of the especially hardest things to make is osmiridium ingots. It requires 2500 RF per tick. It's a mixture of osmium and iridium. So, oh, no, 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 no. Let's try and see how it works like this. See, look, the power just completely died. And you can see all the little red bars are like barely going anywhere. Take that out, it's full, put it in, bleh. <laughs> Just instant death. So, let's hook it up to the new system. So it gets its own specific line. Alright, hooked up now. Now let's see how you do. Oh, 
but still struggling. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so it says Oz Meridium. If you look here, it says 2500 RF per tick. Maybe that's... Could that be per ingot? So the fact that I'm trying to do it on all these ingots at the same time, is that making it slow? Like, what if I put them in one spot? Yeah, now it's fine. So it's 2500 RF per tick per ingot. Oh, no wonder this thing dies so fast. Oh, Christ. Well, um, hmm. That means these HV connectors are just not going to cut it. They're not going to cut it at all. So, let's see, 2500 RF per tick, and at most, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so I can put 12 in there. 12 times 2500. So that's 30,000 RF per tick. And the most I can possibly supply this thing using these HV connectors, it's got three input plugs, and each one can input 8,000 RF per tick. So at most, with HV connectors, I could give this thing 24,000 RF per tick, at most. So this arc furnace is quite an exception. So almost everything, I, I should be able to power pretty easily with HV wire connectors, with these substation ideas, but this particular one, I think I have to use an actual... XNet connector to power it. Okay, just ran a little dedicated XNet line to it. Let's make it an advanced connector. That should do it. Oh, got my light levels back on. There we go. So, let's power that thing with XNet and see how it performs. Just insert and should be it. Alright, let's see if we can handle the Osmeridium now. Spread it all out. And... Boop! Haha, <laughs> didn't even budge. Oh, I love it. So let's see how we're doing on power, huh? It's... Oh. Oh, right, it's not taking power from here. It's... It's taking power from... Deep Resonance all over... All the way over there. But yeah, look, it's doing beautifully. I just want to confirm that that is using 30,000 RF per tick. I'm going to go to Deep Resonance Island. Let's see, how are the batteries doing? Yep, minus 30,000 RF per tick. That thing is so thirsty. Okay, and also while I'm here, I realized I should put the quantum the quantum entangle border over here. Because I'm using this for wireless power. And before it was over on the main base, and it was actually sapping energy from the entire power grid. But there's no reason that it needs to do that now. I might as well just put it directly next to the capacitor bank, and then it won't take any energy from the power grid, you know, any of its capacity or ability to transfer or anything like that. It'll have access to practically unlimited power without hurting anything else. I guess I'll put it right here. It says 0RF, so it's not actually... Oh wait, I think I need to set it. No, 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 you don't set it. Never mind. That's only when you're trying to connect to it, I think. I think I just need to configure the side. Yeah, I guess for some reason it just doesn't interact well with the Vibrant Capacitor Bank. Okay, well it should be perfectly fine. I'm just gonna put a connector here. And... We'll just put a normal one here, so that's going to connect to the entire network. Let's make this an advanced connector. There we go. And that advanced is going to apply to both sides. Okay, there we go. Seems to be working. And it looks like it actually did need to be set to a frequency. But obviously I tried that before and it was losing power, so it still wasn't working correctly, but now it's fine. You can see it automatically kicked in. We're generating power again because it went below 50%. And judging by the plus 17,000 RF per tick, I think we're s I think the, um... I think the arc furnace is still going. Well, since I'm not using this connection here for the arc furnace, I think I'm going to repurpose it as the substation for this place over here. So I just put this pole down here. 
So I'm going to connect this and connect this to the system over here. And then I'm just going to break this one right here. There. So that whole place has its own power. Now let me start to make some other substations. So I added another power substation up here, and it's actually doing double duty. It's actually supplying two different networks. So one network up here connects over here, which connects to all these, basically everything in this entire industrial zone, except the arc furnace. So all of this stuff and these crushers, and actually this even connects down here and supplies power to whatever needs power down here. I don't actually know what needs power down here. Uh, we've got this. We don't actually need this anymore. This is for the Batania base for power, but I'm just using one of those wireless things to provide XNet with power now. So yeah, I could destroy all that. Uh, but it also goes this way. What is the supply over here? I make my inventory stuff. It's a really weird pathway. Goes down here. Oh yeah, that is just for the vat to make the nutrient distillation for my Ender I.O. panel. Okay. So yeah, the top side of the capacitor is supplying all of that stuff. And the other side of the capacitor, well, one of the other sides, connects over here and supplies all of these machines. Okay, I've gone ahead and added another substation over here kind of near the farm area. So this one's connected to two things at the moment. I haven't actually supplied power to the capacitor, by the way. Um, so it's going up and over, and it's supplying power to all of this stuff. Believe it or not, despite the number of connections, this stuff actually really doesn't take very much power at all. I'm more concerned about things like the magma crucible and the igneous extruder. Especially the magma crucible, that thing's very power hungry. And then I've got another line running over here, and that supplies power to all of this stuff. So all that advanced rocketry stuff, and then all of this growth stuff in the farm and all that. So I'm most of the way done. Oh, I also went over here. I severed the connection, so this used to be connected through the trees. You couldn't really see the wires very well, but it used to be connected over here. So it was actually part of that power network. I severed that connection to make sure that they're separate. I also destroyed the HV capacitors and all the stuff that was here for this um, thermoelectric generator room. Because this, this produces such an insignificant amount of power at this point that it's just not even worth having it connected to anything. So I just kind of destroyed that stuff. I'm going to leave it there as a, a landmark of how far I've come. But no reason to use it. So let me go turn on this vibrant capacitor bank. Alright, all of those are on. So the final thing to do is the question of what do I do with this? So I'm definitely not going to disable the system. It still provides a significant amount of power. 4000 RF per tick is still pretty good. So I want to make sure I make use of this. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I dug a tunnel from the one that leads up to here, to this little service hatch substation place, because it's really close to the the uh, canola oil place. So it runs over there, and I'm just going to break this. And I guess I'm just going to break that too, so I don't want that actually connected. To the system. So before I was reading the power from this HV capacitor to determine when to turn the thing on and when to not. But we make so much canola seeds and canola everything, I can probably just leave this thing running 24-7. So just to keep it simple, I'm going to plop down a vibrant capacitor. Oh, I need to clean my inventory. There we go. Uh, I'll fix that later. Probably. <laughs> So let's put down a Vibring Ambassador. I hate the lack of symmetry, but these things are expensive to make, so I don't want to plop down another one. It's fine. Um, 
I guess... Well, they are already all connected here. Should I just put the connector back on this thing? I could also just transfer the power using Xnet. Okay, yeah, I'll just connect it up to receive the power using these immersive engineering connectors. Perfectly fine. Whoops. Alright, so I need to set that to input on the top. Oh, they're not, right, they're not getting any power because they're not actually being told to go. Wait, no, you have a little bit of power in you. Why is that not receiving power? I don't understand. Do they always hold on to 2100 RF? Because they all have that exact amount. Well, I'm going to assume that works, because there's no reason it shouldn't. So my plan is to have them feed their power into this capacitor. And then using this red connector that goes to the substation, because that is connected to the entire network all the way down to the deep resonance place, I'm just going to have it extract the power from this capacitor bank and just put it in the main capacitor bank in the deep resonance place, just to make sure it gets put into the global pool of power to make sure it can actually be used. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. So let me go turn all that stuff on, and then I need to obviously change the system here so that it tells the canola generators to always go. Ah, here it is. Yeah, so extracting from the fluid collector is set to only happen on green. And whatever activated green is gone, because I just destroyed the connections. So as long as we set that back to nothing, it should just work. So now I should just insert fluid into everything. Yeah, looking good. Okay, cool. So is this thing... Is power actually going inside of this thing? Um, it's probably being extracted too fast to tell, but we can tell based on whether these are filling up or not, and they're not, so the power's going somewhere. So it must be getting extracted. Cool. So now that everyone seems to be full... Ooh, well, not all of them. I'm curious whether I can actually, like, empower everything fast enough to supply the whole system. Like, how are we doing? Oh, that's doing pretty well. Yeah, I think we should be fine. seems to be very unequal in its distribution. What am I extracting? Am I... Yeah, I'm on distribute. Should distribute it. Hmm. You know what I could do? I could up the fluid extraction rate. Like, there's no reason I actually have to do this at all. It should be fine, but... Eh, why not? So if we upgrade that to advanced... Boop. That should hopefully just automatically be faster without me having to touch anything. But... Maybe I have to, so now it should be able to extract five buckets at a time instead of one, so I'll just set that to five. What the hell? Well, this thing's messed up. It's auto-correcting it to a thousand like it still thinks it's not an advanced connector. Um, I could try to destroy the controller and replace it. But I'm kind of scared. I'm really scared if I do that. What if it breaks everything? It shouldn't. How are we doing? Is it starting to fill up these? It's not. Wait, it's keeping the fill to 100. But I thought I turned that off. All these oil generators. Oh, there's a whole nother bank of oil generators down here. After this little break here. These I didn't turn off the max. Oh, so that was the only problem. Yeah, it doesn't need to be an advanced connector. This should fix it. It's so weird to look at this ancient Xnet system. I wonder if I would design this any differently now. I'm trying to re-remember what the heck I was doing. Now we good? Yeah, they're pretty much, pretty much all full. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure we make this fast enough that I can just leave this on 24-7. So to finish off, let's go check out how much power is going on over here. Let's look at our input and output. Plus 4,000. Really? This thing isn't even on. I thought I did the math, and I thought that these canola generators generated about 4,000 RF in total, per tick. Now I'm thinking my math is wrong. So, let's see how much we're actually putting into here. Five thousand five hundred. Huh. Okay, yeah, this seems more plausible now. So it looks like I'm kind of just ambiently using around like one thousand to fifteen hundred RF per tick. So the four thousand or so RF per tick plus I was having on the main thing is just what's left over. So these do generate more than more than I thought. Hold on a second though. Three hundred and fifty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 16 times 350. Oh yeah, 16 times 350 is 5,600 RF, which is pretty much exactly what we're seeing here. It's very, very, very slightly less. I guess I was just always wrong about how much these generated, or I forgot. I wonder if I was right at some point and then forgot at some point. All right, well, with that, I do believe that we have finished the energy generation and infrastructure overhaul. It's been so many episodes in the making. Involved going to the moon to get more of those dilithium crystals to be able to make capacitors and doing R&D with RF tools control to manage deep resonance and then doing deep resonance and then building that huge tunnel and all that stuff and these substations. But finally got it working. Now I, for the most part, don't have to worry about power. If something comes along like the arc furnace that uses a particularly large amount, I may have to run dedicated lines to it, either with HV connectors or with XNet if it's very extreme. But for the most part, power problems are pretty much solved. I just don't really have to think about it too much anymore. Alright, well I hope you've enjoyed so far. Not sure what I'm going to do next, but I'll be back soon.